Hi, and welcome to this video about the life of King David, a true role model model for us all in the Bible. Like, his life is so epic and just, like, wow, it's so cool. Like, his humility and just his obedience to God and his patience. It's such a cool and inspiring story for us today. And, like, I'm just blown away that David was actually a real person. It's not like he was, like, some kind of superhuman who could do, like, more than the other humans. But he was simply, like, a humble man, a humble boy who was after God's heart, who loved God so much and who just wanted to please him. So God strengthened him through everything that he went through. He went through crazy trials and God brought him through them victorious because he kept his faith and he had that humble, teachable, childlike heart. So today, join me as we dive into King David's life. I'm actually going to read a summary of the life of King David from an article article from National Geographic, so take it with a grain of salt, you know, uh, and I'm also going to paraphrase a bit of what I personally know of the life of David, so you may want to, like, proof check this <laughs> as you yourself read the story of the life of David in the Bible later. I also have drawn uh, King David, as you can see, <laughs> so uh, let's get into the story. King David was not born into royalty. He entered life as a humble shepherd, and rose to found a dynasty. In the book of Samuel, Saul, the first king of Israel, failed to reach a decisive victory against an enemy tribe, the Philistines. God sent the prophet Samuel to Bethlehem uh, to anoint a new king um, and guided him to David, a humble shepherd and a talented musician. So uh, Jesse was David's father and he had uh, many sons whom he showed to Prophet Samuel. Um, but David wasn't even invited, like he was overlooked by his own father. Uh, he wasn't even an option to be anointed as king. And uh, God says to Samuel uh, that it's not any of these sons that stand here, it's someone else. Because you look to the outward appearance, people look to the outward appearance, and these, his sons that are here look really impressive, like physically, but I, God, I look to the heart. So uh, Samuel asks Jesse if he has any more sons, and he says that there, there is one, the youngest, who is out in the field with the sheep. And Samuel um, goes to him, or he comes, David comes to them, um, and God says that this is the one that I have chosen. So Samuel anoints David with oil to be king. And then... Um, some time later, David comes to uh, Saul's court where uh, his harp was so soothing that, that Saul called for David whenever he was vexed by an evil spirit sent by God. First Samuel 9.16 Saul was so taken with this young man that he appointed David his armor bearer. Soon thereafter, a major Philistine battle loomed. This time, the Philistines fielded a fearsome new weapon, a giant named Goliath, carrying a huge bronze spear. 1 Samuel 17, 5-7 The Israelites were frozen in fear, except young David. Armed only with a sling, he picked a stone from a riverbed and sl slung it at Goliath's head, so he took the challenge Goliath was this huge giant and all the Israelites were just terrified of him. Um, and he just like screamed Goliath, like just shouted at the Israelites and mocked them. And David said that I'll, I will fight this giant because he is uh, blaspheming the name of God. Like he's coming against God. He says that I, I will do this. And Saul, the king, is like, David, you cannot do this. You are so young. This Goliath, he has so much experience in battle. He will kill you so fast. Then David says, but the Lord has trained me. When I was in the field and uh, guarding the sheep, A bear, bears and lions would come to to take the sheep um but i would but i would grab them by the mouth and just like he would just like physically overpower the bear and the lion and he says to Saul so just as god protected me from the paw of the bear and the paw of the lion so he will also protect me from the sword of this philistine 
Uh, so he goes out, like he stands firm on God's word. He's like, I come in the name of the Lord and the Lord is stronger than you, Goliath. And Goliath is so full of pride. He doesn't like, he's just completely fuming with rage at David's just confidence, basically. Um, but David's aim was true. The stone struck the giant and killed him, prompting the Philistines to flee. The Israelites were jubilant. Saul was compelled to place young David at the head of his army. 1 Samuel 18.5 Even though David then married Saul's daughter, Michal, and became a close friend of Saul's son, Jonathan, an intense rivalry developed between the young new general and the king. Saul even began to plot to kill him. So David was doing nothing wrong. He was like serving King Saul faithfully and King Saul had been anointed by God. So he was like God's anointed king, but he had uh, disobeyed God and pleased people more than pleasing God. Uh, so God had rejected him. And uh, that's why David was anointed uh, as a new king, because God says that David, son of Jesse, is a man after my own heart. He will do everything that I want him to do. Uh, so David was in the service of King Saul and he was playing this harp uh, and he was anointed so the evil spirits would flee from King Saul when David would play. But then King Saul was filled with jealousy because people were beginning to uh, like uh, see the potential in King David, uh, King David, in David. Um, <laughs> and uh, like they were uh, just saying how great David was and Saul became really jealous um, and he was afraid that yeah he was just filled with jealousy and pride uh, so that's why he even began to plot to kill him and uh, David had little choice but to flee to enemy territory. Soon the country was once again torn by war as Philistine forces gathered at Mount Gilboa and Saul and his sons all serving as commanders in his army rushed to meet them. But God had turned against uh, Saul, and the Israelite ranks were decimated. All of Saul's son fell to Philistine swords, including his heir, Jonathan. Badly wounded himself, Saul then fell upon his or own sword, 1 Samuel 31, 1-7. So this skips a little bit. So right before Saul dies, um, there are many, many years where Saul is hunting down David in the wilderness. So David is hiding. He has a group of men uh, with him. Uh, that's like basically his like an army that he travels with and he like um, goes to battle with these men and they have like the favor of God. So they are successful. But Saul all the while is like on a mad hunt uh, to kill David, even though they were like basically close friends, like when David was serving King Saul. But David, all this time, he trusts in God. And this is where many of the Psalms were written. Beautiful Psalms, as David just pours his heart out to God, as he's in this trialing, uh, trying situation in the wilderness, just armies are after him and wanting to take his life. Um, but he stands firm. He stands firm. He knows that God is with him. And he knows that, yeah, God will fight his enemies and his battles for him. He doesn't have to, like, uh, try to take Saul. And even, like, Saul um, goes after David in the wilderness. And uh, he uh, goes into a cave where David and his men are. So Saul goes in uh, to that cave unknowing that these, like, that David is there. And David's army, David's men, that he, his companions that he has with him, says, look, God has given Saul to you. You can just go and kill him now. Um, but David was overcome. He was convicted that he did not want to kill God's anointed one because God had indeed anointed King Saul. Um, so he just took a piece of his robe and ripped that off. And uh, then he like showed it to Saul, like, Saul, look, I had the chance to kill you, but I didn't, like what are you doing, basically? Like, why are you hunting me? And King Saul is like, just feels remorse at once. He's like, oh, David, my beloved son, or something like that. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, but David doesn't dare return to uh, 
uh, King Saul's um, land where he reigns. So he continues to stay in the wilderness until this battle that I read about where Saul dies and his son dies, including um, David's close friend, Jonathan, who was Saul's son. So it's um, that must have hurt David too to know that Jonathan and Saul died. Um, so David mourned um, when Saul and Jonathan died. He really mourned and uh, he was really in distress about it. And then continuing with Israel's army in, in a headlong retreat, the Philistines swarmed over the Hebrew highlands. Saul's only surviving son, Ishbal, was anointed as his successor, supported by the northern tribes. But the southern elders went to Hebron, David's military base, and in due course anointed David king over the house of Judah. At first, David chose to ignore the Philistines and instead marched on Jerusalem. Eleventh Samuel, Second Samuel five six. After capturing Jerusalem, David was then able to defeat the Philistines. Eventually, all of the regions in Canaan came under David's control. Now, at last, David could turn his attention to building a state ruled from a proper Israelite capital. He pitched the tent of the tabernacle to house the Ark of the, the Covenant. This was obviously not a satisfactory, satisfactory solution, and the king complained to the prophet Nathan that I am living in a house of cedar, but the Ark of God stays in a tent. 2 Samuel 7 2. An oracle from God assured David that the Lord will make you a house, a Davidic dynasty, but that it would be up to his offspring, King Solomon, to build a house for my name. 2 Samuel 7 11 to 13. According to the books of Samuel and the subsequent book of Kings, David then expanded his territory until Israel had become the dominant state in the Levant, absorbing the nations of Ammon, Moab, and Edom. Modern research has questioned this claim, and many scholars believe that some of the legendary materials surrounding David served to exalt him as an ideal king, as successful in peace as in war, beloved by God as well as his people. Indeed, a great, David's greatest achievement and that of his son Solomon is not the extent of their putative realm, but the fusion of the quarrelsome tribes into one nation. Some scholars have even questioned whether David is a historical figure, though the discovery of a stela from Tel Dan with the ins inscription Bitzdud, which may mean House of David, would argue otherwise. Notwithstanding David's political achievements, his personal life was filled with conflict and tragedy. David's compromised his reputation by pursuing the beautiful Bathsheba, who was already married to Uriah, one of David's top commanders. David placed, ordered him placed in the front ranks of a planned assault against the Ammonites, where he was duly killed. As soon as Bathsheba finished her time of mourning, David married her and she bore his son. So here David goes against God um, by, like, he's filled with lust at, at this beautiful a woman who's already someone else's wife, so he sends the husband to battle. He plots to kill her husband so he can marry this beautiful woman. Um, and this happens, but then he instantly turns to God in like just sorrow. And there, I think there are Psalms right after this has happened too that David wrote. Um, and God um, chooses to forgive him, but he says that because you have sinned against me, then your son will die. The prophet Nathan sternly rebuked David for his evil scheming because it had displeased the Lord, and indeed the baby died. Second Samuel eleven twenty seven. David then repented before God, and in return was promised that Bathsheba would bear him a second son. His name was Solomon. As David grew older and feeble, Bathsheba extracted David's promise that their son Solomon would succeed him, and so it came to pass. So that's a bit of the life of David. Uh, as I said, take all of this with a grain of salt because it is the National Geographic, so it's not like, you know, the Bible. Um, but I really recommend you to check out the Bible. And I myself am so inspired by the life of King David. Like, as I said in the beginning, it's just so cool. So yeah, read. His story can be found, as I mentioned briefly, in First Samuel, where he is anointed as king by 
prophet Samuel, um, and then Second Samuel in the Book of Kings, and then of course the Psalms that David wrote to give like a full impression of what his life was really like and to dive into this because we can learn so much from his life today. So yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and uh, yeah, bless you. See you around.